we're Torvest Retail Services, your go-to crew for all things travel retail. We're trusted by airlines and rail operators to provide tailored best-in-class products, services and technology solutions that enhance their customers' experience to improve satisfaction and drive revenue. Our mission is to make the journey as memorable as the destination, personalizing the customer experience at every step of the way, whether they're on board, in store, or at home. As a division of the Torvest Group, we're big enough to deliver and small enough to care, calling on more than 5,500 team members stationed all around the globe. We're driven by a team of passionate people who genuinely care with a work ethos and culture that strives for excellence in the pursuit of innovation and change. To enhance revenue, quality, cost effectiveness, efficiency and consistency for your business. All of this supplied at speed and underpinned by data-led research, customer feedback and joint decision making. Earning respect and gaining trust through a human, honest, authentic partnership is the environment in which we thrive. We care. Torvest Retail Services, your faster, smarter partner. Fantastic. Thank you so much to Torvest, one of our platinum sponsors, uh, for being involved. And uh, thank you so much to Hilker and that amazing panel just before. As I said, there's so much. We designed AviaDev about networking. So we've got about an hour and three quarters before we break for lunch, and the rest of the day is networking. So I can see everybody chatting. We've got to meet tonight as well, but we've got two brilliant panels still to come, and this session is something really, really magical and something really special. So this session is something that has actually been in development for almost two years. I first met Gert at the AFRA event in uh, Nairobi in 2022, and um, we had a podcast. Gert was kind enough to come on the podcast, and I wanted to sort of give you a little bit of that, that, that narrative. Now, AviaDev, as you all know, our laser focus is connectivity and route development. And what I wanted to be is actually be a platform where we unveil some new research into those opportunities when it comes to connectivity. And um, the unserved route opportunities are always the ones, you know, what are the, what are the lowest hanging fruit? What are the routes that have the strongest demand? So my vision was to identify those markets. I'm not a data person. I don't have access to that data. I wouldn't know how to extrapolate it and how to analyze it properly. But luckily, I know a man in Gert who does. Um, so as Gert is going to come and join me on stage, Susie's going to play a little bit of music. And uh, please welcome Gert to the stage. to the stage. Welcome to AviaDev. Thanks, John. Oh, I think it's working. It's all right. Thank you, Cole. Yep. Cheers. So I think where we need to start is I've sort of provided a little bit of narrative, but what, what exactly, what exactly uh, your job title? What exactly do you do at Airbus? What exactly is your job? All right. Thanks, John. Actually, I, uh, I work in a team in Airbus marketing department that is called the fleet and network planning team. We're basically a uh, team based in Toulouse, in Airbus headquarters. Uh, we're a group of 10 people. And inside that group, we have uh, people who have experience and background in uh, fleet and network planning in airlines. We also have data scientists. We have people who specialize in forecasting. And as such, we are a kind of full group of people with all together the knowledge we have uh, can actually well, do quite some nice things. So um, we have different assignments in Airbus marketing department. First one is to um, screen the market for opportunities. 
Uh, we study trends in the markets. Uh, we try to be up to speed with everything that is happening every day in the commercial air transport industry. And with that knowledge, we try to help airlines in analyzing opportunities, longer-term opportunities. We try to anticipate how the market will evolve. And as such, we end up in doing, indeed, root studies, uh, network development studies. And the ultimate goal of doing all that is to uh, engage in fleet plan uh, studies so that we can anticipate in the longer term future what kind of ideal, airlines, uh, ideal fleet plan airlines will have to cater indeed for the needs that we will have in the future market. Okay. So that's what we do. And I myself, I am focal point for Africa, Middle East and uh, the Indian subcontinent in that group. Great. So super busy doing all these, uh, all these market studies and then I ring you up and say, yeah, I've had this idea and you know, you're not somebody who does things by halves and if you've seen this Excel sheet, um, it's unbelievable. So talk us through, what I'm going to do now is leave you to it to talk through a little bit of the methodology, but this report is being released today. You will get a copy, um, there will be an email, there's going to be a QR code you can scan at the end of Geert's presentation as well. It's completely fresh, okay? Um, you can challenge him on it, we can talk about it, but what we want to do is almost give you a little bit of a countdown and we're going to get you involved in this as well. So. Um, yeah, I'm sorry for adding to your workload and losing your weekends, Gear, but it, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely nights. sure it's worth it. <laughs> so, right. over to you. Thank you very much, John. All right. So, thank you. So, basically, people, what we did in preparation of this event, and indeed uh, following the question that we got from John, because this is really something we, 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 we thought of together, um, we, we actually worked on a report in which we studied unserved routes to, from, and within Africa. So basically we did two parts in that study. We looked into all the intercontinental flights in a first part uh, to and from uh, Africa. And then the second part of the study was really to do exactly the same, but then within Africa. When I say Africa, I must I specify that we focused on the sub-Saharan region in Africa, but then of course this can equally done for whatever part of the, of the world. Now, I will immediately share the outcome of the study. So I will show on the next slide what are the unserved routes that we could identify. I have to specify that we did the study based on traffic levels. So OND, origin destination traffic levels that we could identify. Of course, we can do much, 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 much more than what is actually in the scope of this study, but that can be follow-up work later on or uh, can become discussions between ourselves if needed. So here we are. This is the result of the study that we did. This shows you on the left-hand side the top 10 unserved routes to and from Africa for the period which we specify, which was the period between December 2022 and November 2023, because for the whole study we had to fix a time frame in which we focused. And um, actually the list is shown here. I can immediately add to that that it is not in order of importance based on the um, number of uh, travelers on these routes. It's done on purpose because we would like to launch a poll with the QR code that you have on your tables uh, because I would like to get a kind of sentiment as to what is your understanding today when seeing this, what could be the most important unserved routes on the left-hand side to and from Africa, and secondly, on the right-hand side within Africa. So please, if you would be so kind to participate in the poll, please scan the QR code, and uh, there's two questions. So the first question addresses the left-hand side, the second question addresses indeed the routes within Africa. We'll get to the results during the presentation, first showing the results of the poll, and then we'll test that towards what indeed we uh, discovered in our study. Now, while you do all this, I'll quickly try to talk, talk you through what uh, exactly we did as a study, what was the methodology that we applied. So here we go. Basically, it all starts with two sets of data. We worked on, first of all, OND traffic data, which we get out of the Sabre database that we buy. And secondly, we combined that with 
OAG data that actually represent all the flights to, from, and within Africa. So basically what we do, it's quite easy, it's quite simple, but it becomes complex because of the size of the files, as John already uh, mentioned. We basically combine traffic data with flight data, and we try to develop a list like this, showing on the left-hand side the city pairs, so all the city pairs to and from Africa. We identify what is the OND traffic, the number of passengers that have flown on these city pairs or between these city pairs during the uh, period of the analysis. And we combine that with the number of flights that we have seen between those city pairs, so the non-stop direct flights. Now, that is all great, and that's just an example of a couple of city pairs. What we are really interested in in this study is those origin and destinations that show some traffic numbers, but for which there was no direct flight or no non-stop flight existing. All right? So that is indeed the basis of the study. We could say, oh, luckily we found everything, we have the answer, now let's start flying. No, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And if you allow me, I'll talk you through uh, the following steps that we did in order to do this study. So basically what we do, we start from the green box, all the origin and destinations between which we find traffic, but between, between which there's no non-stop flight existing. And we take that as a basis to go to step two. Because what we have to think of is that if today we decide to launch a non-stop service, it will not be tomorrow that we really start flying, because there's massive amounts of things to be organized. Uh, we need to make sure the old station is aware that people are uh, present in the old stations to, 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 to actually uh, support the flight. We have to make sure that we have the aircraft, that the crew is trained, all these kind of things on top of marketing the flight, selling the tickets ahead of the first flight, etc. So we can easily assume that between now and the moment we would launch the flight, traffic will continue to grow. So in this study, we actually did a projection to the year 2026, and we took a very conservative growth rate of only 2.5% per year. Um, why is that? In order not to offend the CEOs in this room, because that's always the discussion we have. We always get the remark, we are way too optimistic. Well, yesterday in our uh, press conference, we announced a CAGR of 4.1% for Africa, so I decided to reduce that to 25 only. Now, on top of that, we have to take into account that traffic will get stimulated when a non-stop service is put in place. Simply the convenience of having a non-stop flight between the origin and the nation will attract more traffic. So we have to add that to the equation. Now, Next thing is market capture, because it may seem counterintuitive, but even if there is a non-stop flight between a city A and B, there will still be a number of people, I pled guilty on it, who will prefer to, to, to actually uh, transit through another uh, airport. So even if there's a non-stop flight, we will not capture all the traffic. The assumption we made in this study here was that we would capture 70% only of the total traffic. And then last but not least, we have to take into account as well that if a new flight is uh, put in place between a new origin and a destination, be it a hub of an airline, that at that moment we will attract some level of connecting traffic. All right? Because between, if we add another destination in a network that already exists, principally we create new OND pairs between the new destination and all the other destinations that already existed in the network of the airline. So therefore, if we add all this together, we get finally to the total forecasted captured traffic. All right? Good. It's not done yet. I'm terribly sorry. Because... From this total forecasted captured traffic, we can only start looking into, well, is there an opportunity to really do these flights? And for that, we need to identify an aircraft type that can do the job, right? I work in Airbus, and of course, when talking to airlines, I would definitely try to make the pitch for the Airbus aircraft. Nevertheless, this is not part of this study. We simply said, like, okay, let's look into what are the ONDs, and if ever there's an aircraft type that can do the job, we can indeed consider it. Now, first, of th first thing to take into account is that we need to have an aircraft that is capable of doing the job. 
has the aircraft that we have in our portfolio or that exist on this uh, planet, do they have the range capability, right? We don't only talk about range, we also talk about low speed performance, so takeoff performance, landing performance, because in Africa we happen to have a couple of uh, very challenging airports and not every single aircraft can go everywhere. So that needs to be taken into account. Secondly, we also need to have an aircraft with a capacity that allows us to offer a minimum level of service. And for that, I assumed that we would like to have at least three flights every week, because otherwise it wouldn't really make sense to launch a flight. And on top of that, even if we do these three flights per week, we still want to have decent load factors. Right. These load factors, of course, depend of the traffic that we observe, but also of the capacity uh, of the aircraft. So if we have a match between performance, capacity, number of aircraft flights we can do every week, and if we still get a decent load factor, then principally we found the basics to indeed say, yes, it could make sense to further analyze this city pair. That's where the study ended, all right? It makes perfect sense to then indeed go into performance calculations, uh, cost operations, revenue operations, profitability operations. We can also consider how could possibly competitors in the markets move when we launch a non-stop service. And that's all part of the scope of the activity that we can do within uh, the work that we do uh, with our airline customers or prospective customers. Now. I will stop here explaining what we did. I would like to return to the question that we raised in the beginning of the presentation, which is indeed, in your opinion, what would be the most important unserved route today, both uh, to and from Africa, and secondly, within Africa. So if it's possible, John, can we get the uh, results of the poll of the first question? Oops, it's zero everywhere. Oh, no, OK. There we go. So we actually have quite an interesting result. Ah, it's still progressing. All right, OK, so it's ongoing. Um, well, actually, I'll have to talk, fill up the time, because the next slide is actually the result. <laughs> OK, but things are moving. It's, it's looking at least moving to, in the right direction. So it appears that Johannesburg to Mumbai comes out as the unserved route most important to and from Africa today, followed at this moment by Cape Town. Is that because there's a large delegation of Cape Town present in this room? <laughs> All right. Nairobi to Washington. OK, interesting. All right, I'll give it five more seconds, and then we'll cut it there. So it definitely appears like Johannesburg, Mumbai, in your opinion, coming out as the most important unserved route to and from Africa based on traffic levels, followed closely by Cape Town, far closely, followed by Cape Town to Brussels, and then all other routes scoring about 10% or less. All right, very good. Can we switch back to the results to the PowerPoint? Thank you. Here is the result. So for the study period between December 2022, November 2023, what we actually observe is that Harare to London, both ways of course, is the most unserved or the most important unserved route today based on traffic numbers. All right? So Johannesburg to Mumbai is indeed following very closely behind and it is indeed a very important route. I won't go into details on that, but what struck me during this study is that 4% of the people traveling between Johannesburg and Mumbai actually travel first to London to immediately connect in London and fly to Mumbai. This is kind of crazy, all right? And this says that if there we could launch a non-stop flight, that probably we would be able to attract quite some traffic. Watch it, third place, Lagos to New York. There, indeed, we observed it as an unserved route. Well, while doing this study, I actually picked up that Delta Airlines decided to reinstate the, the flight and to do so, I think it's from the end of October this year that they will relaunch the route. So that somehow corresponds to each other. 
then Entebbe to London, Lagos to Toronto, Cape Town to Brussels, definitely in the top 10, Durban to London, and the others that follow down the road. All right. Could we switch back to the poll and have a look at the results for the second question, which is exactly the same, but then for the routes within Africa? There we see Abuja, Nairobi coming up. Okay, I understand that it's running. Cape Town to Lagos. Chencha, I guess we were, some people were convinced about Cape Town now. Cape Town to Lagos. <laughs> Did you do some lobbying there? All right, Abuja to Nairobi seems to be quite important in your opinion. And Dakar to Libreville scoring 4%, 5%. Right, still moving. All right, I think we can cut it off there. And I can announce you that once again, you're not 100% right. Because the most important unserved route today within Africa, based on traffic levels, is Dakar to Libreville, in fact. But watch it. It's closely followed by Abidjan to Douala. Abuja to Nairobi is indeed in the top three, followed by Cape Town to Lagos, which is a route, in my opinion, has quite some uh, potential for the future. Dakar to Douala ending up as uh, the fifth most important uh, unserved route in Africa today. Right. This being said, that is indeed the very, 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 very top, 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 top of the iceberg of the whole study that we did. There's much, much more in the document that we'll be able to share at the end of the presentation. Nevertheless, if I'm allowed to do so and I still have five minutes time, thank you, John, I would like to share a couple of insights of what is in the end coming out of this study, because knowing the top five is great, but there's much more behind. Let's have a look at this. If we put all the flights together, all the unserved routes, the top 10 intercontinental and the top five within Africa, then nine of these 15 identified routes start or end in West Africa. So a very important conclusion for me is, if people in this room represent West Africa, airports, airlines, I think there's a little job out there to do, because this represents quite some potential to extend networks in the future and to improve connectivity. Now watch this, four out of the top 10 unserved intercontinental routes start or end in West Africa. And last but not least, watch this, each of the top five unserved routes within Africa start or end in West Africa. So that is quite amazing and that indeed uh, is a good notion. Of course, there's a lot, a lot of constraints which many people in this room are definitely aware of. And this will, of course, define whether yet or not it will happen. But nevertheless, when we look into traffic beta, at least the potential is there. Right. If we look into the same approach or the same thing, but at country level, then we see definitely that Nigeria is running away with the first prize, followed closely by South Africa. So there, too, we see a couple of routes which definitely have potential. Uh, Johannesburg to Mumbai, which we mentioned. Durban to London is a route that already existed in the past and that could uh, possibly come back in the future. Cape Town to Lagos, like we mentioned, and then the last one, Cape Town to Brussels, which I personally like very much because, of course, I'm Belgian. Nobody is perfect. Anyhow, right. Then we go to the uh, city level, and there Lagos actually runs away with the first prize with five of the unserved routes we identified, followed then indeed by Cape Town, Douala, Nairobi and Dakar. Good. Now that we know all this, it's also interesting to look into how do these routes perform right now compared to where they were before we were hit by the pandemic. And there too, we have quite some interesting uh, insights, because some of these routes are actually still unserved today, but they are, yeah, they, well, fine, they see increasing demand um, from the travelers. So Harare to London, being the most important unserved routes back in the period that we were looking, sees traffic increasing by 20% beyond the pre-pandemic level. So this is a growth market. This is definitely a route that needs attention. Entebbe to London is growing. Lagos to Toronto is growing. Cape Town to Brussels, definitely. We were talking about the K3 effect. I can explain that in a discussion if you want. And then Lagos to Manchester, look at this. 
traffic levels increased by 71%. So this is definitely a route with potential for the future. Inside Africa, we have the same effect. There we see that three out of the top five unserved routes actually have higher traffic levels or more traffic than uh, before the COVID crisis hit us. That brings me, unfortunately, already to my uh, conclusion, because I could say a lot more about it. Nevertheless, we are constrained in time. Here is uh, the most important items that I wanted to highlight. Unserved city pairs do exist in Africa, to and from Africa, and they are definitely worth to be uh, analyzed. If you want, please come and see us. We're around. Um, we have an Airbus stand. We will be only happy to uh, talk to you and assist you in doing these kind of studies. Coming back to the content, we have concentration of the top unserved routes definitely in West, Af in West Africa, in uh, Nigeria, and then the top city, of course, we mentioned it, is Lagos. Traffic on these city pairs is growing, has grown beyond uh, pre-pandemic levels. It's a growth market if it's unserved and traffic is growing. At some point, somebody should be interested in starting to capture that uh, traffic. And as I said, a deep dive analysis is definitely part of the equation. We can look into performance, into operating costs, into revenues, into competitive behavior and all these kind of things. We have the capability in-house in Airbus, in our group. If ever you're interested, please come and talk to you. To, to us, we are definitely very ready and interested to work together. And now, as a cherry on the cake, I can share the full report that I've been working on during my weekends and the nights the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's available on the Airbus website as we speak. You can scan the QR code to get access to it. And for the real freaks in the room, please come and see me because I have 20 hard copies available. So those people who will really want to have it and uh, have it to file in their records, please come and see me. I'll be happy to share a hard copy with you. If needed, signed. <laughs> All right, so that is it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank and you so go. much. So it's You're so welcome. fresh that Marie from Airbus saying it, that QR code, it might not quite be ready, but go to the Airbus stand, go and see the guys. They've Absolutely. got the link um, and you can get that, but it's so fresh. And honestly, the work that gets put in, the support from Airbus, what we want to do with this report is update it every, every year through Aviadev so that we can look at this and actually identify where we've, we, where we've filled those gaps. The other thing that we're going to do for those of you who are followers, um, you know, keen followers of Aviadev, uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, but I normally do. Um, I host the only podcast dedicated to African aviation called Aviadev Insight Africa. It's available on every platform. Um, we've done over 290 episodes now. We have 100,000 listeners around the world. And Geert has very kindly agreed to join us and talk about this and, and analyze it and debate it with the, uh, the mighty Sean Mendes and Baramji Gadiali um, very soon. So that could be very fun. And, uh, one condition. Oh, one condition. Which is that they don't grill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid. <laughs> I can't promise that. So we do a monthly connectivity podcast, Sean and I, and uh, we have different guests just analyzing the new routes, the routes that have expanded, etc. So that podcast is available and uh, this one will be loading up in the next few weeks. But go and see the Airbus team to get the report. I'm not sure whether the link works. But uh, Geert, I've got to say massive thank you. Another round of applause. Very welcome. My pleasure, John. Thank you. Thank you, Geert. Thanks.